Hey, Jonathan here at Colfax Math. Today I was going to go over 15 problem tests from the Praxis Core Math. This is kind of the basic math skill. Uh, I've become a teacher, and this is Praxis that has been replaced with CSET. But I'll go through 15 problems. I'll put the camera over my shoulder and just show you how I kind of figure them out. Laminated overnight on a CNC cut jig. Okay, so let's get started here on number one. So what is the probability of spinning a D on the spinner? So I have a circle with eight equal pieces. Um, the definition of probability of any event is the number in the event divided by the number in the sample space. So I only have one D on the spinner. They're all equal size. So the probability of getting the D would be the number in the event getting a D over the sample space of eight total units. So the probability is one eighth. And there it is. All probabilities of all events have to be greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. So all probabilities are between zero and one. You could represent it as a fraction, a decimal, or percent, either way. Okay, number two. Which of the following are supplementary angles? Supplementary means they add up to 180 degrees. So a linear pair, two angles on a line would be supplementary. The other word complementary, complementary are two angles that add up to 90 degrees. So if you had a right angle, two angles that add up to 90 are complementary. And the way I remember that is C comes before S in the alphabet, just like 90 comes before 180 in order. So which two angles add up to 180 degrees? This is a little bit of a distractor, but this is 190, so that's not it. 105, that's not it. This is also a distractor to see if you know the difference between supplementary and complementary. 80 and 10 is complementary, but we're looking for supplementary angles, 150. And then these two do actually add up to 180. So that is our correct answer. A lot of this is really vocab, knowing the difference between complementary and supplementary. Okay, a car costs $25,000. With the paper in front of me, I write down all the important numbers. I do that for a few reasons. One is I could go back and check my work, and I also make less mistakes that way. And I'm really trying to decode this paragraph into numbers. Okay, if you're taking the test on a computer, you have scratch paper in front of you and you do the same thing just on blank paper, numbering it. So a car costs $25,000 plus $675 for tax and title. So the total cost of the car is $25,675. I put $2,500 down, so I'm going to subtract the down payment from the total cost of the vehicle. Five. One, so 23,175. I have a three year loan at 4% interest, so I have to figure out how much interest I'm going to pay on this car. So I'm going to take that 23, the total amount I'm paying off. So I'm going to take that total of 23,175 times the 4%, or 0.04. And that'll give me how much interest I pay in a year. So I pay $927 per year in interest. And I do that for three years. So 927 times three is 2781. So that's the total interest payment. So I take that total interest payment and I add it to my total amount due. So the 2781 plus the 23,175 is the total amount I'm gonna finance, 25,956. So th that is my car, my titles and fees, minus my down payment, plus all of my total interest over three years. So I take this amount and I'm gonna make monthly payments, 12 months in a year. So I divide this amount by the 36 months I pay it off. So I divide that by 36 and I get $721 per month. So there it is there. What is the value of X in the following equation? 
Well, the way I solve equations is I need to get x the variable by itself. I reverse my operations to do that. If I'm adding 15 to it, I now subtract 15. So then I have negative x is equal to 63. Still solving for x, I divide both sides by negative 1 to get a positive x, and I have x equals negative 63. So there's the distractor there. There's the correct answer, negative 63. Find the area of a rectangle. Area of a rectangle is area's base times height. So area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. Area of the rectangle is base times height, 6 times 4, 24. That little tick mark right there means feet and feet. So I'm going to have 6 feet times 4 feet gives me 24 feet times feet is square feet. So the answer is 24 square feet there. All right, turn to the page to number 6. A $1,000 lottery winner had $0.35 cents removed, deducted for taxes. So I have $1,000 minus the 35%. So I'm going to convert that to a decimal. I remember this conversion by this little arrow saying go over two places. So it's 0.35 times 1,000 is how much I'm paying in taxes. That's 350. How much was a winning check? Well, the winning check was 1,000 minus this 350 or 650. So again, the natural distractor is 350 because that's what you pay in taxes, but it's asking how much you actually get. Okay, number seven. What percent increase in cars sold in 2005 when compared to 04? So we're talking about the jump from 04 to 05, from 04 to 05 right there. So these are only telling you the the values you're going to look at, and these are the numbers, the actual number of cars sold. So I'm going to figure out how many car increase it was. So I'm going to do 1817 minus the 1580. Use a calculator on that one. So 1817 minus 1580. So I sell 237 more cars. And I'm going to take the increase in the amount over the original amount. So the original amount is 1580. And I sell another 237 to get to the next year. The percent increase will be that increase amount sold over the original amount. So 237, 237 divided by 1580 will give me an increase amount of 0.15 or 15%. Uh, this one right here, which is the same as 11 25th. 11 25th, that's a fraction. It looks kind of intimidating, but really it's a percent. A percent is out of 100. So what can I multiply this by to get 100 on the bottom? If I multiply it by 4, that'll put me at 100. I'll put a 4 in the numerator as well. So I'm really multiplying by 1, not changing the value. So this fraction is the equivalent of this fraction, 44 one hundredths, or as a decimal, 0.44, or as a percent, 44%. So there it is right there, number eight. All right. Hopefully this is helping. Angle ABC, ABC, this angle measures 150 degrees. What is the measure of ABD? Angle ABD is this angle here. Well, this is a linear pair, like I talked about earlier. The sum of these two is 180, so 180 degrees minus 150 degrees gives me 30 degrees, or the measure of ABD is 30 degrees. Well, I'm thinking of it. If you like the video, hit like, subscribe, and uh, hit the bell if you want notifications. So I know this isn't a math class, but you know, in a 15 minute video, if you could pick up some of these ideas, they repeat themselves in all kind of standardized math tests. Okay, so this is scientific notation, which is a number times 10 to a certain power. 
And how this works is it just tells you where to move the decimal places, how many to go over. So a negative three says I start here, so I have 16.2 times 10 to the negative three. I go over three places to the left, so one, two, three. There's no number there, so it has to be a zero. So one, two, three. So my answer is 0 0.0162, this value right here. If it was positive, uh, I would go over to the right. So if I had 16.2 times 10 to the power of two, I go over one, two, and get 1,620. So scientific notation is a way to keep track of the decimal place so you don't have to write out a lot of digits. Okay, a woman parks her 15 foot long car. So I just draw that right out, her 15 foot long car. In a garage that is 19 feet long. So this is a total of 19 feet. How far from the front of the garage will her car be so it's centered on the floor? So I want this and this to be equal. The sum of the two together is four feet. So 19 minus 15 gives me four feet. And then I want it to be equal, so I cut that four in half to get two feet. So there's my answer right there. A little diagram helps a lot. All right, turning the page here to number 12. A charter bus, so I have a bus, is 65 miles per hour, while a car's average speed is 70 miles per hour. So that means every hour, this car does five more miles. If the bus and car depart from the same place at the same time, how much further ahead is the bus after eight hours? So they're both traveling for eight hours. Well, if this car is five miles in one hour, five miles faster than the bus in one hour, then I would multiply that by the eight hours my hours would cancel and it would give me 40 miles. So it's a unit conversion. So my answer to 12 is 40 miles. A man loans his friend $10,000. It's not really a friend if he's loaning it to him at 7% interest, but $10,000 at 7% interest. Again, I move my place over one, two, so 0 0.07. The friend repays 5,035. So I'm going to do, figure out what the interest is first. So 10,000 times 0.07 is $700. So the total cost is 10,700. He repays 5,035. How much does he still owe? So I'm going to take that 10,700 minus the repay amount and get 5,665 that he still owes. So number 13 is that right there. Okay, down here, number 14, solve this equation. There are two variables, so I need to have either another equation or a value for one of the variables. I do, x is equal to negative one-third. I take that value and I plug it in for x, and I figure out what y is. So y is equal to x negative one third plus three. So this is gonna bring three down by a third or it's gonna be equal to two and two thirds. So there's my answer there. Um, the other way I could do this is get a common denominator. Three is the same thing as three over one. The denominator would be three so I can multiply it by three over three Multiplying by a factor of one doesn't affect the value, so now I have negative one third plus three times three, nine thirds, which would equal nine and negative one would be eight thirds. And then as a mixed number, three goes into eight twice, six with two left over, two and two thirds. All right, and I think this is our last one here. Hotel Intercept service costs three dollars for an hour so it's three bucks per hour and 15 cents per five minutes 
if the total time is three hours and 10 minutes, how much is the cost? Well, that first hour is gonna be $3. So I'm gonna put that first hour right there for $3 as my total cost. And then I'm left with two hours and 10 minutes. I'm gonna convert that into minutes. I'm gonna convert that into minutes. So 60 minutes in an hour times two is 120 plus 10. So I have a total of 130 minutes after the first hour. So how many five minute units are in 130? So I could do 130 divided by five minutes to get the number of five minute sections there are. So that's gonna be equal to 26. Right, 130 divided by 10 is 13, so 130 divided by 5 is twice at 26. And then it's 26 five-minute units after the original hour at 15 cents. So I'm going to do 26 times 15 cents. So it's $3.90. So the first hour is 3 bucks. The next two hours and 10 minutes is $3 and 90 cents. I add those together to get $6 and 90 cents, this value right here. So hopefully that'll help you. The key is to go slow, really break the problem down, take a lot of notes. If you're taking it on a computer, have a piece of scratch paper and mark them up. Um, the hardest problem has the same weight as the easiest problem. So don't make careless mistakes. The biggest part of it is really kind of decoding the paragraph and putting it into numbers and really answering what they're asking. So hopefully this helped. Uh, if you liked it, I'd like to hear your comments down below and good luck. There is in fact no better profession in my mind than teaching school. I love my job. Thank you. Thanks for watching.